somebody near you and say welcome to the last quarter of this wonderful year say to that person it is written the book of divine remembrance has been opened to your advantage so every Thing you had desired and far more than you had expected these last three months they will find full expression if somebody believes it can I hear your hallelujah amen you're welcome man of God great to have you in our midst today Today, by the grace of God, I'll be sharing with you on engaging lavish praise. Engaging lavish praise. Worship, adoration, and thanksgiving for crowning blessings. Engaging lavish praise, worship, adoration, and thanksgiving for crowning blessings. Psalms 65 states in verse 11. That our God crowns our year with his goodness. So much so that all our paths will drop with fatness. I'll be very glad if we can have scriptures as I call them. Psalms 65 verse 11. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. And thy paths drop fatness. Lavish praise, worship, adoration and thanksgiving for crowning blessings. To praise God. When we praise him, we extol him based on the things he has done in our lives. When we worship him, we talk about his worth in our lives, who he is. 
Worship is not limited to or constrained by what he has or hasn't done. It's all about him, his majesty, his omnipotence, his omniscience. When we adore him, we go out of our way to let him know the value we place on him. How dear he is to us. It is romancing the Lord with your words, with your heart, with your feelings and your emotions. When we render thanksgiving, we appreciate him for the works he has done in our lives. Like the testimonies that were shared today. Specific events that are the doing of the Lord. Wonderful in our sight. But let the truth be told. Every one of these things is interrelated. I have found that it is impossible to worship effectively without bringing in praise, without bringing in adoration, without expressing our gratitude and thanksgiving to him. It is impossible to adore him without aspects of worship and aspects of praise and aspects of thanksgiving coming into it. It is impossible to give him thanks properly and comprehensively without aspects of worship, praise, and adoration coming in. So I have come to discover that these four things are so interrelated that in the process of carrying out one effectively, you must delve into Cross the boundaries into the others as well. So you will find that in the teaching of today, all of these will be referred to almost interchangeably. Praise, worship, adoration, thanks given. A few other words out of very many in the scriptures that will obviously connote some of these words and suggest similar meanings to praise, worship, adoration, and thanksgiving. Some of them even being aspects thereof include rejoicing, dancing, shouting, blowing trumpets unto the all mighty God. The first thing that every one of us needs to understand is if you fail to praise God, you limit and possibly totally deny yourself access into his presence. Psalms 100 verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. If you are not a person of thanksgiving, you won't cross the gate. If you are not a person of praise, you will not access where he listens to other people's cases. The courts of the king. Am I talking to somebody here? Which is why we see Queen Esther put on her royal garments and pose. Standing in the court and opposite the king's throne. 
And the king holds out his royal scepter to her. Because the Bible says that praise is comely. Praise is a befitting garment. That is what that old English comely means. It is a garment that is tailor-made, designer sewn for you in particular. When a Christian becomes a person of praise, worship, and adoration, you wear designer clothes into the presence of God. Hear me, child of God. The Bible makes it clear that God is such royalty. You don't come into his presence wearing rags. Mordecai wore sackcloth and ashes. In the day of his sorrow and lamentation, he was not permitted even access to the gates. The person who comes with murmuring, complaining, God is not moved, God is not interested. No matter how big your problem be, Learn that access will only be accorded you if you have the royal garments that admit you into the king's presence. Nobody goes into places where royalty sit wearing rags. They don't open doors for people like that. The garment of praise admits. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have the tickets? Do you have the invitation? The garment will admit you. The garment of praise, worship, adoration will not only get you beyond the gates, will bring you into his presence. In fact, somebody said, when you go into the dimension of worship, it is not just accessing his presence, you kiss his face. Am I talking to somebody here? That's why David was a man after his heart. He knew how to kiss the master's face. Hear me, child of God. People who are always praying and asking. You make your supplications at a distance. I've never seen a lawyer embracing the judge in court. Am I talking to somebody here? When you come with supplications, you stand at a distance and talk. Then the man you're talking to assesses what you have spoken and decides what next to do about it. But when you come with worship, you kiss his face. And when you kiss the master's face, his hands come around you in embrace. And if his hands come around you, the Bible says, in his hands. Fullness of blessings, pleasures forevermore. Everything you require. When he opens his hands, all creation is provided for and fed. If you want your needs met, become a person of praise, worship, thanksgiving, and adoration. Thanksgiving, praise, worship, it cocoons you. It cocoons you with the very presence of the almighty God. Psalms 92 from verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. I pray that we as Christians will be people of thanksgiving, praise, and worship at least morning and night. But you do yourself a favor to become a person of continuous, unending thanksgiving. First Peter 3 states in verse 13, And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? It is a good thing to give thanks unto God. Nobody can harm you because when you begin to give thanks, that presence of he who inhabits the presence of uh, the praises of Israel cocoons you and comes around you. Divine presence. The presence of the almighty God. The one thing that Moses says distinguishes the Christian from every other person in the world. Rich uncles can bless you. That's good. 
You might have connections in the corridors of power. Very good. But none of these things can compare with carrying the presence of the almighty God. If you want that presence, become a person of praise, worship, and adoration. Romans 8 states in verse 32. Romans 8, 32. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? When you become the one that carries his presence, no enemy can withstand you. It's not possible. When the enemies see who is behind you, besides you, walking hand in hand with you, the case becomes different. It was Pastor Adeboye I heard that told that story about three fishes in the great sea. And a shark had made up his mind he was going to feast on the three of them and had informed them that their days were numbered. The first one hired an octopus to look after him. The shark first dealt with the octopus, ate his eight legs and ate him too. Then ate the fish he was guarding. Fish number one, gone. The second one hired a school of barracuda. Vicious, dangerous fish, quite all right, to guard him. But the shark targeted the barracuda one after the other. And when he had finished all the barracudas, he still picked up the little fish. The third one said, there is no help in this. So I lift up mine eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? So he prayed and asked for the presence of God. And every other person, every other creature in the sea noticed that this fish seemed to be going everywhere he needed to go. But the shark, even though there was nobody watching him or guarding him, kept his distance from him. And they couldn't understand it, so eventually they called the shark. I said, you finish the other two. This one that doesn't have any security man that he hired. You don't seem to be able to come near him. What's going on? He said, are you people blind? Don't you see everywhere he goes, the big shadow that is following him? I've been looking for what is causing that shadow. I can't find it. If the shadow is this big, I wonder how big what is really covering him. The real thing that causes the shadow. I wonder how big it is. That is why I'm scared. That is why I'm not coming near him at all. May the presence of the almighty God overshadow you from this time forward. And I tell you, every enemy of your destiny shall maintain his distance. Listen to me, child of God. You know, we see and know these scriptures, but sometimes it just doesn't register. Psalms 22 verse 3. Psalms 22 verse 3. Hallelujah. It's a scripture we quote all the time. Every one of us knows it. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. The one that lives within the praise of Israel. When you become a person of praise, thanksgiving, adoration, Jehovah relocates. Where you're praising him becomes his address. When a woman at home is cooking and singing, she doesn't know that she has taken up a divine insurance policy for everyone around her and everything that pertains to her. Why? Because the almighty God comes in. Hear me, child of God. That same scripture read in Good News Bible says, But you are enthroned as the Holy One, the one whom Israel praises. You are enthroned. Contemporary English version says, Yet you are the holy God 
ruling from your throne and praised by Israel. But there's another version that I am looking for that says that you the throne your throne is a praise of Israel. Hallelujah. Just a minute. Your throne is the praise of Israel. You have chosen to make praise your throne. Psalms 22 verse 3. God's word version. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. So when you begin to praise God, you give him throne in your life. Do you know what it means to sit on a throne? It means the king is in residence. The Bible says where the king is, his word carries power. His eyes put away evil. Am I talking to somebody here? Where the king sits, authority and power is there. Where the king sits, the soldiers are guarding. Where the, thing, the king sits, there is security. There's security in Dodan Barracks. More than there is on the street where you live. Am I talking to somebody here? Because a common president lives there. When the king of kings and the lord of lords takes a throne because of your praise, the mehanaim of heaven gather around his throne. Security is established where he is praised. If you want the presence of the king enthroned in your life, become a person of praise, worship, and adoration. As this year is coming to an end, Mba months or otherwise, those who are afraid are very afraid. People are terrified of these last, this last quarter. September, October, November, December. So the best part of this year is this last part of this year. If that is the truth for somebody here, can I hear your amen? amen. But there are certain things you need to engage to make sure that this year delivers to you in full everything Jehovah has appointed for you no carry over Deuteronomy 28 therefore says in verse 47 because thou served not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now this word, every spiritual truth, reversed is still true. It means that when you serve God with joyfulness, rejoicing, gladness, praise, worship, and adoration, what will be the result? The abundance of all things. And no enemy will be able to afflict you in any way. Somebody under the sound of my voice. If this year you want the fullness of what God has appointed for you. Go into rejoicing. Go into praise and worship. These last few months. Dedicatedly and addictedly. Abide in the place of praise, worship, adoration and thanksgiving. Hear me. God is actively looking for people who will seek him at this level. Actively looking. There is an ongoing search. Why? Because there are too few that understand this mystery. Too few. John 4, 23. But the hour cometh and now is. This last quarter is the hour. It has now come. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He seeks because they are not many. 
There are far many more that are murmuring. They are looking at what they don't have and complaining about what they thought they would have. I tell you something, child of God. If you will just change your tactics and your methodology, you will see transformation. Because the truth of the matter is that anything you praise, worship, and adore Jehovah over, that thing begins to multiply. Stop lamenting what you don't have and start celebrating him for everything he has done and everything he can do that he has not yet done. Just worship him for who he is. A little boy showed up in a meeting where there were 5,000 men and Jewish tradition, they count men, they don't count women, they don't count children. And if you look around in any church gathering, you will discover usually more women than there are men. So if there were 5,000 men, there might have been 7,000 women and nobody added the children. So we're talking of probably 15 to 20,000 people there. And the master said, they're hungry. Disciples, give them to eat. So there's nothing anywhere. 200 pence can't even buy enough to feed all of these people. But there is a little boy here who has, is it five fishes and three loaves or three fishes and five loaves? Jesus said, ask him if he will give it to me. And the little boy willingly, cheerfully, happily surrendered his lunch. His mother was the only smart woman, smart enough to remember that the boy needed lunch to be packed for him. And the master took that lunch in his hands, raised it up to his father and gave thanks. Then he started breaking the bread and handing over to the disciples. After he had made the people sit down in companies of 50. And the people took the small bread and said, but how far will this go? But they went to the group as instructed and did what he did to and broke and fed. And the more they broke, the more the bread increased. The more they broke fish, the more the fish increased. Until everybody had eaten and was satisfied. And the master said, pick up the pieces. And 12 baskets were filled after thousands had been fed. Why? Because the master gave thanks. There are people in marriages who are complaining about their husband. Wicked man. He is uncaring. He is never attentive to me. He is even miserly. And that is why he is getting worse and worse and worse. Because since the day you married him, You've been murmuring about him before God. If you would only thank God, first of all, that you have husband at all. Because many are still looking for and have not yet gotten. You're still complaining about your wife's cooking and her dressing and her relations and how they keep coming in and out of the house. Stop. Find something about your wife to thank God about. There might be only two things now. But the mystery of thanksgiving is that as you begin to thank God for those two things you see in him. Watch out. Tomorrow you suddenly discover that there are another two things. Because he has doubled what you were thanking him about. And by the next week there are eight things. And by the next there are 16 things. Because whatever you thank God for. Like the fishes and the bread. There will be multiplication. People who are smart. Don't look at what they don't have. They look at what they have been given. Solomon realized that this was too much for him. He went up to the high place. I'll tell you what Solomon went to do. He went to ask God, why me? Why me? I am not the oldest. Why did you decide to make me king? Did I ask you? My elder brother had made himself king. You said, not him, it is me. Now he's waiting for daddy to die so that he'll kill me. I can't handle this. Everybody's saying that is it this one that is a product of the woman who was involved and in, in, 
an illicit relationship with King David that will sit on the throne of Israel. Everybody's against me. Did I say I wanted to be king? But I'm sure by the time he arrived at that high place, something ministered to him and said, don't murmur. Don't complain. You don't deserve it. You're not getting what you've been given because you deserve it. Grace has discovered you. Even if you die tomorrow, it will be written in the annals of Israel that Solomon ruled Israel. There was a king called Solomon. So he arrived and said, bring the sacrifices. In those days, three st sacrifices standard, seven perfect, 21 extraordinary. He crossed 21, went to 50. They were looking what is going on. He went from 50 to 100. They said, I don't understand this. By the time he entered 500, nobody was talking. And he said, look for animals anywhere. Just bring them. You don't know why I am thanking him. You are looking at the ordinary. Who am I that I should be made king? What is there in me that qualifies me? God passed the qualified people and picked me and made me king. That is why I am sacrificing to him. I don't have to give you an explanation. Why? I am giving him the kind of thanks I'm giving him but I know what he has done for me by the time he slept that night his throne had been established by the time he slept that night God woke him up and said I owe you now and it is not possible divinity does not owe humanity what do you want name what you want you have done for me what nobody else has ever done and he said I don't need anything he said I said something say something he said just give me wisdom and God said wisdom plus power plus money plus everything else you didn't ask I give to you am I talking to somebody here eyes have not seen ears have not heard nobody's imagination encompassed what Jehovah can and will yet do for you in this last quarter of this year 20 17. But there's one thing that will provoke it. Thanksgiving. Not murmuring. Worship. Not complaining. Belittle the things you don't have. And shout at the top of your voice about the things he has done for you. And watch and see what will follow to his glory. In Jesus' mighty name. A little boy's loaf and fishes fed thousands and had left over. I prophesy over somebody who will catch the revelation this year. I prophesy over somebody who from this night will become a person of dancing and singing and jubilation before God. Your baskets are about to run over. Your miracles are about to overflow. The God of more than enough is about to visit you. This quarter of the year in the name of Jesus. And just in case, your expectations had already died. Know this. Just in case the dream had already been buried. Know this. Thanksgiving provokes resurrection power. So that business is dead will come back to life. Relationships dead will come back to life. Projects dead will come back to life. In John chapter 11 from verse 41. Four days dead, Lazarus. Stinking, hopeless situation. The master came and said, roll away the stone. It is too late. By this time he stinketh. The business stinketh. The situation stinketh. The probability that anything good from it can come again. Not possible. It is dead and finished and done with. Jesus did not bind the spirit of death. 
Jesus did not call any spirit forth from anywhere. He simply said in 1 John eleven forty one, 41, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And the next thing he did was, Lazarus, come forth. Death released him. Decay released him. Putrefication released him. Hopelessness released him. And the one written off came back to life. I don't care how bad the situation is. These first eight months of the year have put you in a place where everything is upside down. If you will, in the remaining months of this year, just abandon yourself to thanksgiving, appreciation, adoration, and worship. Watch and see that written off. Come back to life in Jesus' mighty name. And I don't care what your background is. Your father might have been the worst native doctor your environment had ever heard about. In fact, he was responsible continually for human sacrifices. That is why ancient covenants and curses following you, your brothers, your sisters, nobody has been able to lift up his head. But there is a solution. When there's a strong man binding the entire family, there is a solution. When everybody is under lock and key, there is a solution. When everybody is imprisoned, there is a solution. The solution of praise, worship, and adoration. Because this is a solution that goes to the foundation of the problem. When we go into deliverance, most of the time we end up cutting off the branches. But the trunk is still there. And everybody who has done it before knows that it's only a matter of time. There will be revegetation. Am I talking to somebody here? The thing will grow back. That is why we minister and we keep ministering and we keep ministering deliverance. But somebody here from today will key into the mystery and the ministry of praise, worship and adoration. And you will not need deliverance again. Because Paul and Silas in the prison at midnight when their pain was the most intense in Acts 16 from verse 25. When they were deep in the throes of pain at midnight when nobody sings. If you've had toothache at midnight, you know what toothache means. If labor starts at midnight, you will know what labor means. There's something about midnight. That intensifies darkness. Intensifies pain. It is the hour when witches are most at work. Am I talking to somebody here? At that time all the forces of darkness sit on your problem. That is when Paul and Silas. In the most uncomfortable of positions. Under great pain. Lifted up their voices and began to praise. They not only sang loud. They sang so loud the Bible said all the prisoners heard them. They were not. All this miserly praise and adoration. You do thanksgiving over one or two items and you relax. That's the problem. You're giving it to him like perfume. Piff. Piff. Not like the woman with the alabaster bottle. She understood what Paul and Silas understood. She broke the neck of the bottle. The aroma filled everywhere. When you break the neck of perfume bottle, you have made up your mind it is finishing today. Nothing will be covered up. Give him praise like there is no tomorrow. Give him praise like after today, praise will be out of fashion. Dance for him like you won't have legs to dance tomorrow. And see what Jehovah will do in your life. Because the Bible account says that the almighty God began to enjoy the praise. Began to enjoy the worship and began to tap his toes. When he began to tap his toes, there was an earthquake on earth. Why? Because he sits in heaven and he has the earth as his footstool. As he tapped his toes on earth. The earth began to quake. When earthquakes happen, they go to the root of the problem. I, I don't know if you watched this recent thing happening in America. That was ordinary wind, not earthquake. When earthquake
earthquakes come, mountains disappear. And other mountains appear where there were no mountains. Am I talking to somebody here? When earthquakes take, a, take place a hundred miles away, tectonics under the surface of the earth generate tsunamis that bring disaster on the face of the earth. An earthquake, you can't quantify the power of an earthquake. Am I talking to somebody here? Earthquake took place and the prison from the foundation shook. When Jehovah shakes your situation, he shakes out what is evil and shakes in what is required. Because the Bible account says, all the doors scattered, all of them flew open. Every single door, every chain fell away. All the people who were bound were free. Plus the prisoners who didn't know God, they were free. Plus the people who were hearing and wondering what is wrong with these people. Who, how can they sing at midnight when they are under such pain? In the, they were in the depths of the prison. The prisoner had been told, put them in the deepest dungeon. Am I talking to somebody here? Yet everybody's door opened and everybody was free. If you want your family free, start singing. Your brother who's an unbeliever, you want him saved, start singing. Start praising, start worshipping, start adoring. Go into a different dimension. Am I talking here? Even the prison warder was saved that same day. My brother, when deliverance comes to the oppressor who was oppressing you because of praise and worship, then that, that's a dimension that unheard of. Even the prison warder gave his life to Christ. The situation has endured too long in your family. It is time to engage the mystery of praise, worship, and adoration. Especially as this year is coming to an end. Do it and see what God will do for you and yours in Jesus mighty name. So you see, thanksgiving attracts God and makes you attractive to God. So that when you become a person of thanksgiving, God draws nearer till he is right there with you. It is a befitting garment, comely garment. Psalms 33 verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely, befitting for the upright. Psalms 147 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. I see you. This last section of the year. I see things producing in your hand. As you go into the dimension of lavish praise, Worship, thanksgiving, and adoration. Because until you do that, you won't see what God has planned for you. You saw, you saw Brother Dyer on Sunday. American, is it British Embassy. Abi said he went to British Embassy. He had been denied visa for two years. He went there and he started doing what? Dancing. You see, our problem is that we're too self-conscious. We rationalize things too much. Can you picture a young boy who came for visa in front of the, of the British High Commission? There are no speakers there. So he must have been the one doing the singing. He was doing the singing, plus the clapping, and the dancing. So much so that everybody took note of him. How can you do that for Jehovah? If men have noticed you and notice who you're dancing for, notice who you're singing to, in that place, you have put him on display. How can he deny you? So by the time he came back in the evening, he said, chair was waiting for him reserved for him by the managing directors and the chairmen and chairwomen who also came for visa and once he entered they started clapping why because 
Had you not come, we would have questioned God. Had you not come, we would have asked, is there truly God? We heard you calling his name. We saw you dancing before him. You cannot do that before Jehovah. Ah! And men will still ask, where is your God? You cannot dance before him and beg before men. No way. No way. You cannot sing unto him and yet beg before men. No way, no way, for he is our God, he is our God. It's time to change the order. It's time to rearrange things. John Fitzgerald Kennedy told the American people, stop asking what America can do for you and ask, what can I do for America? That's the greatness of America. That's the history of America. I watched this last hurricane and I saw people banding together saving other people, leaving their own families, and going out to rescue them. It was, look, if you didn't get an education from Hurricane Harvey striking Texas, then you were not in the spirit. There's a spirit to Americans. I saw Arab Americans. I saw black Americans. I saw white Americans. I saw all of them gang up to make things work and they are still working to make things good for one another. But let me tell you something. All of that came from the spirit at work in them. A spirit deposited by God. And I'm telling you today that God is waiting for somebody of a different spirit. Not the spirit of murmuring and criticizing and backbiting, but the spirit that will praise him. Because when you do, all creation responds to you. America is the greatest debt on nation on earth. Yet, they are the world's number one nation. It doesn't make sense. But the Bible says in Psalm 67 verse 5, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase and God, even our God shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Two things I want to point out to you from this. Number one, let them praise you then means until they praise you, you can see this. When they begin to praise you, then the earth will yield her increase. The oil is in the earth. The diamonds are in the earth. The houses are built on the earth. All wealth is tied to the earth. If you want to eat the good of the land, start praising God. And the Bible says, then the earth will yield. Yield means to freely release. The struggle will be over. Freely the earth will yield you her increase. But it goes further to say in verse 7, God shall bless you in such a dimension that the ends of the earth shall fear him. Hear me. Dangote's wealth is fearful. Am I talking to somebody here? Dangote's wealth is fearful. I was in America. Dangote is investing 66 billion dollars whether it is loan I don't know but Dangote in America every day they are advertising Dangote group of companies Dangote is no longer looking at Nigeria Dangote is now investing in America we are here still looking for three square meals that man is looking to take over the American economy his wealth is fearful. 
as fearful it is, as it is, it does not compare with that of Bill Gates. Am I talking to somebody here? There is wealth and there is wealth. There are people who have some small change. There are some people who have some Rolls Royce cars. All of those things are wealth and small change. But you see, some of these people you're talking about, they'll tell you, I don't have Rolls Royce. Why? Because Rolls Royce, what is it? What's the big deal about Rolls Royce? They can buy it and give it to each of their senior managers. Am I talking to anybody here? So it's no longer important. Those are people with fearful wealth. And the Bible says, if you want to be wealthy so much so that people will look at you and fear of your God will come upon them. If you want that dimension of wealth that the world will call frightening, not to be rich, not to be able to pay your bills. If you want frightening wealth, become a person of praise, worship, and adoration. And the earth itself will release such wealth unto you that men will fear your God. I don't know about you, but when we pray, pray and say, my father, my father, make me a positive wonder. Thou wonder walking God of Israel. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm talking about that dimension of success. I want it. I don't want to die ordinary. I want people to see the difference the Holy Spirit can make in the life of a believer in my own life. If that is you, can somebody say amen? amen. Then become a person of praise. Become a person of worship and adoration. Become a person who abides in the presence of God. We hear of the businessman called Chikasin. His business had almost liquidated. He went into fasting. And as of today, his regimen every day until he has spent four hours in the presence of God. He doesn't come out to do business. Yet, he didn't go to secondary school for one day. Amongst his friends, he counts heads of states. Before you count the 20 richest men in Nigeria, I'm sure you'll count him. What is the secret? Worship, praise, thanksgiving. And less than seven, ten years ago, he had liquidated all. His business was almost packed up. But from then till now, look at what the Lord has done. He's not a respecter of persons. If he can do it for one, he can do it for every one of us. May this last section of the year be the time when you too activate fearful miracles in your own life in Jesus mighty name I'm not talking of just thanksgiving praise and worship I'm talking of addicted dedicated heartfelt praise worship thanksgiving and adoration the people who do it are never ordinary Mike Mudok came to Nigeria to minister. Traveled to Abuja to minister with Bishop Oyedeko. And on the day they were coming back to Lagos, as they entered the jet and flew into Nigeria, as they landed in the airport here in Lagos, as usual, Bishop Oyedeko again said, Thank you, Lord, for joining Mrs. And Mike Mudok said, I have been counting. Since we said good morning this morning and headed for the airport, this is the 87th time, something like that, you're saying thank you, Lord. Bishop Oyedeko hadn't been counting. But if between Abuja and Lagos, one hour flight, if I have 50 minutes flight, really, a man has said thank you, Lord, from his heart to God 87 times. Don't you see the difference in his life? Don't you see what it is producing? And God tells you that everybody his blessings is, is an example to you. If you want what they have, do what they are doing. It's as simple as that. 
addicted thanksgiving. Hear me, child of God. The Bible makes it clear that when we ask, when we pray, we can only receive if we ask our rights. Because if we ask contrary to his will, he doesn't even hear us. James 4 verse 3, he ask and receive not because he ask amiss that he may consume it upon your loss. So prayer of asking, you won't get anything if you're asking for the wrong thing. 1 John 5 14, and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Which means if we ask contrary to his will, he does not hear us. It's not every prayer that God hears. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. But there is something that is guaranteed. That every time you do it, he not only hears you, but he relocates to where you are. What is it? Praise, worship, adoration. Prayer can fail. Prayer can go unheard and therefore unanswered. But praise, worship, and adoration can never fail. Praise, worship, and adoration can never go unanswered. Moreover, when you pray, he can release an angel, even angel Michael. But angels are subject to interception. The angels released on behalf of the prayer said by Daniel were resisted for 21 days. Am I talking to somebody here? Well, who can battle with the Lord? When you praise and worship, he comes live and direct. He doesn't send an angel. I would rather have him than have an angel. That's why Moses said, if you don't go with us, don't send an angel with us. We won't go anywhere. If you want direct attention, if you want the attention and the presence of the Almighty, direct hands-on involvement, praise, worship, and adoration is a way to go. You can't miss with that one. Praise the Lord. And I don't care how many enemies say it will not happen. It will still happen. In fact, your praise, worship, and adoration places a demand on God for the head of your enemies. You don't mention anybody's name, but you're just singing, praise, worshipping, and adoring. The head of your enemies has been demanded for. You didn't have anybody in mind. You were just worshipping God. If your enemies know you're doing worship, they better hold their head well. In Mark chapter 6, on verse 21, on a day appointed, it was the birthday of King Herod. Herodias' daughter danced, jubilated, called him names, eulogized him, and the man's head spun around. And he said, under oath, I promise you, even up to half of my kingdom, ask anything you want, I'll give it to you. Ha! Ha! Go to governor of Lagos State and know what you do for him to give you half of Lagos. Can anybody tell me what you do? Nothing. But a king under oath swore, half of my kingdom I'll give you. And the girl ran to, his mother, to her mother and said, Mommy, what do I ask for? Small girl. She didn't even know what to ask for. And wicked mommy said, ask for the head of prophet John the Baptist who has been giving me trouble since. And she said, O oh king, one thing I asked for. What is it? John the Baptist's head. She didn't know what she was asking for but it's what her mother told her to ask for. But the king had sworn an oath up to half of my kingdom. Just mention it, you'll get it. And the Bible account says the king didn't want to do it but he was bound by his oath. He sent an executioner to prison. They cut off John the Baptist's head. 
of whom the Bible says no greater prophet than him had existed up to this time. Am I talking to somebody here? He lost his head because a girl danced and eulogized the king. And they put his head in a tray and served to the girl. What would the girl do with human head? Well, that's what she asked for and that's what she got. Up to half of my kingdom I'll give you. Yet the Bible I read tells me of the king of kings and the lord of lords who has spoken and who has said, it is my good pleasure to give you the whole kingdom, not half. Herod was willing to give half. The king that you and I serve, the almighty in Luke 12, 32 says, all I will give you. How? If you please me. How do you please me? Praise, worship, adoration. Just sing for me. Dance for me. I tell you, if you become one that dances before God, one that makes God happy, you have not asked for everything, anything at all. The heads of your enemies will be cut off and served at your feet. Am I talking to somebody here? If you want your giants to die, praise God. That's why David said, this God gave me a lion. This God gave me a bear. You see that uncircumcised Philistine? The same God who gave him to me. And Goliath's head was cut off and served to David. Saul! Saul, the king that chased David all over the country, making him a vagabond. On the day they were bringing back the Ark of Jehovah's Covenant, David wore loincloth and was dancing like crazy before the Ark of the Covenant. And Saul's daughter, said to him, don't you see, king, dancing like common motor packed out. <laughs> and David laughed, says, that sense where you know get, that's your problem. It is this dancing I was dancing that made Jehovah to prefer me above your father. Where's your father today? I am the one that is king. That is, it is this dancing that made God remove your father and put me on the throne. It is this dancing that made your father control the whole army and chase me all over the nations, even chasing me into the camp of the Philistines. He couldn't find me. He couldn't kill me. Where is he today? God has put me on that throne. I will continue to dance. And the woman thought the matter was over. Jehovah said, because you mocked him, there shall be none barren in my house except you. And it shall be complete barrenness. The children you gave birth to in the previous place where they married you, they were sacrificed as well to make sure she was, to make sure she was totally barren. None left alive for her. Why? Because she mocked a man who knew how to praise God. May everything that has mocked your destiny laughed at you, said you will not succeed. May they suffer the same judgment. As you go into praise, worship, and adoration from this time forward in Jesus' mighty name. No wonder David said in Psalms 103 verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then he began to call them one by one. By one. Receive grace to count your benefits in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the living God. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice and I must end because of time. I never go anywhere. But I have to bring this to an end quickly. This last part of the year it is time to shift gear and go into the prophetic. There is great power in the prophetic. Who is it that speaks and it comes to pass when Jehovah has not spoken? And he speaks and says, not a jot and not a tittle of what I have said will fall to the ground. My words can never return to me void. But they will accomplish everything I send them to accomplish. My word. My word. My word. He has a word for you in this season. 
There is a prophetic word for your destiny. A word from God is all it will take to change your history. If you hear the word that he has spoken about you and align with it, your history changes. Son of man, Ezekiel 37, this valley, dry bones, many, many dry bones, very, 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 very dry, scattered all over the place. Can they live? He said, only down the west. And the master spoke the word. Gave him a word. Son of man, this is what you need to do. Repeat what I'm saying. Bones, relocate yourselves, come together. And he spoke it and there was noise everywhere. And all the skeletons rearranged themselves. And he said, another word, speak. Flesh and sinew, come upon the bones. And there was another noise. And the bones became dead bodies with flesh on them. And he said, another word, a third word, speak again. Breath, come from the four corners of the earth and breathe upon these slain that they might live. And they stood up a mighty marching army. Why? The prophetic word. The prophetic word tried, tried and visited a dead, dry bone confusion situation in the desert. And a mighty army stood up. I don't care how dry the bones of your testimony this year are. The book of remembrance has been opened. It is a prophetic word for this year. But there are some other words that you need to speak into your situation. So that the bones will come together. And organize themselves. And become a marching army. Because eyes have not seen ears have not heard. Nobody's imagination encompassed what Jehovah has appointed for you. And when you begin to worship, praise and adore, adore him, you will hear the word. You will hear that prophetic word. Isaiah 30 from 29. And you shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. And once it is heard, he will show the lighting down of his arm to confirm that word. He will show the indignation of his anger against anything resisting your blessing. And with the flame of a devouring fire, he will scatter with tempest and hailstone everything resisting your blessing in Jesus' mighty name. For the Bible says in that Isaiah 30 verse 31, For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Every enemy of your destiny that had smitten you hitherto, Jehovah will strike them down by reason of the prophetic word that you will only hear when you become a person of praise and worship. Hear me, child of God, as you're going to praise, worship, and adoration, Jehovah begins to speak loud and clear. Loud and clear. Any minister of the gospel can tell you this. Anybody who is a worshiper in his bedroom can tell you this. If you are a person of worship, keep a notebook near you. Because as you're worshiping, things will be coming to you. Jot them down. They are instructions from God. God is speaking loud and clear. In 2 Kings chapter 3, three kings gathered with their armies, marched seven days, and the water and the food exhausted, and death alone awaited them because it was a famine period. Everywhere was desert, and they were in the middle of nowhere. In verse 10, Good News Bible said, We are done for. King Joram exclaimed, The Lord has put the three of us at the mercy of the king of Moab. We are done for. Verse 13, again, he said, We are done for. We are finished. Our situation is hopeless. The prophet didn't even like two of the kings. So when they located the prophet Elisha, he looked at them. And he said, in fact, the sight of you people puts me off too much. That anointing has disappeared. I'm not hearing anything anymore. But because of this other one, 
because of him, I have to do something. But I can't do anything because heaven is not communicating. I'm not hearing. But send for a mistral. Send for somebody who knows how to praise, worship, and adore. Oh boy, take guitar, sit down, start singing. And as he began to sing, heavens opened. As he began to sing, Jehovah began to speak again. And the prophet spoke and said, you see that plain over there? Go and dig ditches. Well, what are we digging ditches for? Thus says the Lord, fill the place with trenches, many, many of them. For you will not hear lightning or thunder. You will see no sign of rain. But all those ditches will be full. So rain fell somewhere, far away in the mountains. Flash flood came and would have swept away, but for the ditches. By morning, all the ditches were full. And as he spoke, he also said, and it's small, oh. Now that Jehovah is saying, he's saying much more than that. He's saying, I will deliver the Moabs into your hand. The king of Moab, I've handed him over to you. You will destroy all the cities of your age-old enemy that you've never been able to destroy before. Why? Because the voice of the Lord came. When the voice of the Lord comes, the prophetic instruction might not make sense. But if you key into it, your life will change. And because these kings did, by the next day, they had almost wiped out the entire nation of Moab. Everything changed. Water came. Somebody here. The flood is coming. The blessings are already released. But you need to engage the voice of God. Hear what God will say. Key into that prophetic word. And take your miracle delivered into your hand. You need praise and worship. It causes him to speak. He says in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9 and 10 that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Nobody's imagination encompassed what Jehovah has prepared for those who love him. But you will know these things. He will reveal them to us by what? By his spirit. Because his spirit searches out and shows us God's deepest thoughts. Amen? If you want to access God's deepest thoughts for you, you will hear it through his word, through his voice. Go into praise, go into worship, and see what the Lord will do in your life. Moreover, Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4, he says, where the word of the king is, there is power. You need that word, and you will hear it in the place of worship, praise, and adoration. Because he promises in Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. There is a word coming for your life. And it will prosper. It will accomplish in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of of Jesus Christ. It is time for thanksgiving. It is time for praise, worship, and adoration. Because when you praise and worship and adore like the tenth leper out of ten, one came back. He said, go, your faith makes you whole. Others were cleansed. Only he was both cleansed and restored. I see restoration of all you've lost. All it will take is praise and worship. If you don't believe it, look at Psalms 89 from verse 20 to verse 38. And see the incredible promises of God to David. Why? Because David was a man of praise, worship, and adoration. The mystery of the success of David is found in Psalms 119 verses 164. Psalms 119 verse 164. Seven times a day I praise you because your laws are fair. Seven times a day. If you too want it, do likewise. So I said, he was a king. Oh. He was very busy. Oh. He went to war. 
Every day he was fighting, he still found seven times in every day to worship and adore God. Why won't God bless a man like this? You too become a person of praise, worship, and adoration because it works. I have a friend I remember who in those days told me something that the Lord had him do for a period and the anointing upon his life escalated. The Lord told him in every hour, give me five to ten minutes of worship around the clock. So he set alarm clocks, did everything. Every hour he'll find five to ten minutes just to praise and worship God. In under a week, his life transformed. In under a week, his life totally transformed. It works. It works. Look at Daniel. The judgment had been, I mean the decree had been passed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. He was already comfortable, but he opened his window facing east as before and praised and worshipped and adored God loudly, publicly, knowing that he was doing what he was doing at risk of life. That was exactly like Dyer dancing in front of British Embassy. They threw him into lion's den. But lion had no strength over him. By the next day as he came out, he was promoted. But all his enemies that he didn't even know he had, all of them and all their generations were wiped out. That's the same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They exalted Jehovah in the presence of the entire nation. Let it be known, if God wants to deliver us, he can. But in case he doesn't, these knees we use in worshipping him, we will never use them to bow to your idol. They toss them into the flaming furnace. The people who toss them in, the seven strongest soldiers in the land, died before they even hit the fire. But the three boys tossed into the fire. The fire had no power over them. And they fought man. Whose appearance was the appearance of the son of the living God appeared in the fire for them. These last months of this year, the son of God is said to appear in somebody's life. But you must be somebody that exalts him with your praise, your worship, and your adoration. That is the master key that will bring you the turn around. For God honors those who honor him. And as you honor him with praise, worship, and adoration, get ready. He not only will honor you, but he will command men and nations to honor you to his glory in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'll end by saying something to you. Because of time. Praise, worship, and adoration comes in many ways. Speak to him. Communication of heart to heart. You dance before him. I have given testimonies of this so many times. And thank God Dio gave his own testimony last Sunday. You lift up holy hands before him in worship and adoration. Hallelujah. I'll just talk a little about lifting up of holy hands before the Lord in worship. One of the expressions of worship, lifting up your hands. Psalms 134 verse 2, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Lamentations 3, 40 and 41. Lamentations 3, 40 and 41. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Worship by the act of lifting up your hands. I just want to point out one or two little things about lifting up your hands. <clears throat> the Bible says we are in a battle. You wrestle not against flesh and blood. So you're continually in a wrestling match. And I can tell you wrestling is not this uh, traditional wrestling. It is con full contact wrestling. The kind that this man um, and uh, huh? Mayweather. Uh -huh. Mayweather and this other man and McGregor did the other day 
Sorry for McGregor. Not in ways, Abby. He bit off more than he could chew. Praise the living God. But there's something about lifting up your hands when you are in a battle of that sort. Number one, there's always a referee. And when you have been clobbered, like McGregor was clobbered, I mean, he, did, he was even two days to lift up his hand. The referee had to stop the fight because given another 30 seconds, McGregor might have been in hospital. Am I talking to somebody here? Because he could no longer defend himself. His hands were down like this. And his face was exposed. But you see, the thing in such a fight is that when you come to that stage when you know you cannot go further and you lift up your two hands as an act of surrender, if the man you're fighting with accidentally lands one more blow on you, you have won. Because you surrendered and he hit you, he will be instantly disqualified. When you lift up holy hands to Jehovah, a divine injunction goes out over your life. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets. When you lift up holy hands in worship to God, every enemy of your destiny, Jehovah says to them, back off. Says to them what? Back off. The thing that humiliated you the first eight months of this year, if you will lift up your hands in worship to Jehovah, in adoration to Jehovah, you will hear Jehovah say to your enemies, back off. Your life will become a touch knot. Your business will become a touch knot. Your family will become a touch knot to every enemy of your destiny. Number two, about lifting up your hands. I think it's a Yoruba adage that says that it is a child that lifts up his hand that the elders pick up. But you see, there's this thing about a child lifting up his hands. When the elder bends down to pick you up, he doesn't just lift you. Which in itself is moving you from ground level to his height. His age and your age are not the same, but you've arrived at the same level as him. Usually when elders pick a child like that, what do they do? They hoist him into the air. I see Jehovah hoisting you. I see divine jet propulsion coming upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you will only lift up hands in worship for the remainder of this year. Finally, one more example about lifting up your hands. A couple came to a motherless baby's home. All their papers were now complete. And they had the government's permission to adopt a child of their choice. And all the children in the motherless baby's home, this couple was rich, well-to-do. The child they would adopt, his destiny would change dramatically. So, the man said to the wife, take a look around, and any one of the children you like, that's the one we'll adopt. So the woman was going, scrutinizing, looking at handsome children. And as she was going around, the children were playing, minding their own business, doing their own thing. But as she came to one child, the child had cleft lips, a deformation in the lip. Am I talking to somebody here? But unlike all the other children who were busy doing what they were doing, as she came around, this child did, and instinctively, the mother's instinct in her, she bent down and picked the child up. And she said, I found him. But this one has a deformation. I found him. But this one is not perfect. His heart has connected with my heart. He has touched something of motherhood in me. He has touched something in me that I can't put him down again. This is the one. And that's how the boy's life changed totally. Why? 
because of all the other children in that place, he was the only one who lifted up his hands. Will somebody lift up his hands to Jehovah? This remaining part of the year. And in the name of he whose I am and whom I serve, I can guarantee you 